In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Tuesday, the 23rd of July, 2024, 16th week in Ordinary Time. And today we remember St. Bridget of Sweden, patroness of Europe. This woman was married to a nobleman and had eight children. At the age of 30, she was summoned to the court of the King of Sweden, where she served as lady-in-waiting to the Queen. She tried without much success to moderate the riotous and indecent life of the royal court. After a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. James at Compostela in Spain, Bridget and her husband, Yuf decided to spend the rest of their lives in monasteries. Wolf died in 1344, but Bridget went on to found a double monastery for men and women in separate but adjacent institutions as the start of a new monastic order. In 1350, she came here to Rome for the whole year and spent the rest of her life caring for the poor and the sick, denouncing the excesses of the aristocracy and robustly telling the Pope to return to Rome from Avignon. She had many mystical visions which alarmed her because she feared they might be the work of the devil. But a learned Cistercian monk reassured her, and she subsequently dictated and published the revelations she received, which were partially devotional and partly prophetic. Would like to wish all the Bridgets of our world as we celebrate the Feast of St. Bridget of Sweden today. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Sister Ndukwebon Clement, a sister of Notre Dame, celebrating her birthday today, working in McKinney Diocese in Sierra Leone, text for us the first reading. Gift Mulenga, celebrating the birthday today, From Nakonde Muchinga, Zambia, text for us the responsorial psalm, and proclaiming the gospel is Father John Paluk, celebrating his priestly anniversary today, a Carmelite missionary working in Kananga Archdiocese in Democratic Republic of Congo. Let us pray. O God, who guided St. Bridget of Sweden along different parts of life and wondrously taught her the wisdom of the cross, as she contemplated the passion of your Son, grant us, we pray, that walking worthily in our vocation, we may seek you in all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. He will cast our sins into the depths of the sea. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 7 verse 14 to 15, 18 to 20. Shepherd your people, Lord, with your staff, the flock of your inheritance, who dwell alone in a forest, in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, I will show them marvelous things. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. 
He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm, Psalms chapter 85, verse 2 to 4, then verse 5 to 6, and verse 7 to 8. The response is taken from Psalms chapter 85, verse 8. And the response is, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy. O Lord, you have favored your land and brought back the captives of Jacob. You forgave the guilty of your people and covered all their sins. You have vetted all your rage. You turned back the heat of your anger. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy. Bring us back, O God, our Savior. Put an end to your grievance against us. We will be angry with us forever. Will your anger last from age to age? Let us see, O Lord, your mercy. We will not restore again our life, that your people may rejoice in you. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy. The Gospel acclamation is from John chapter 14, verse 23. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 13, from verse 1 to 9. At that time, while Jesus was speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my mother and my brethren? For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We conclude the book of Prophet Micah on a very good note. Micah was very punchy, who castigated institutions, individuals who were selfish, who was very social justice oriented, now turns to God asking for help for the people of God. He prays, shepherd your people, Lord, with your staff. This is exactly what every priest must do. We may be against certain institutions. We may shout at presidents for not doing their work properly, for not taking care of their people. But at the end, we bend our knees praying for them, asking God to shepherd his own people, asking God to take care of his own flock. Because at the end of the day, if the hand of God is not on the people we are trying to correct, nothing will work out. So each and every one of us must pray. Even before we condemn what the government is doing, what the people are doing, we must pray for them. I like Don Bosco and his attitude towards the children he was taking care of when somebody came to him and said, Don Bosco, we have to send this boy away from our school. And Don Bosco said, did you pray for him first? Did you pray for him? We can react to something, but before doing anything, do we pray for those people we are condemning? 
If we are able to pray for them, we can soften our hearts and we can change our attitude towards them. And even they can change. They can transform because prayer changes things. It does. The gospel passage of today tells us of the experience of Jesus with the family. They came looking for him because they were suspicious of his activities. And so they never listened to his word. And he wanted to tell them who the true family of God is. Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brethren. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. What does it mean to do the will of the father? What does it mean to do the will of God? It means listening to the word of God and acting on it. The family we have on daily bread is only a family in so far as it is attentive to the word of God that we preach and acting on it. So listen, daily bread membership does not require you to pay anything. It is free of charge, but you will never be called a daily bread member if you don't listen to the word of God. It is not just a social institution. No, it is a family brought together, united by the word of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you. Thanks be to God.